savings rate plunges to lowest since 2005. This is an Axios story. Americans are spending most of what they're earning these days. Okay, The savings rate in October was the lowest since 2005 and the second lowest on the record ever. Let me say that one more time, folks. It's very important, Vinny, for you to hear this. I am. Americans are spending most of what they're earning these days. Do you know how scary that is? The savings rate in October was the lowest in two, since 2005 and the second lowest on record ever. This is America, yeah. richest country in the world ever, right? Thanks to higher prices and a return to normal life that has folks traveling and going out again, Americans are spending more and saving less. And for now, many are sitting on a lot of savings so that they don't need to sock as much money away. Keyword. They're sitting on a lot of savings right now. A lot of folks build up a big cash cushion over the past couple of years, but the inflation trending higher than wage increases. At some point, something's got to give. So what does this mean? All right. So people are not selling a house right now for what it should be worth because they have some money. Mm -hmm. They're not in a hurry. Uh, people are – I bought a, a Tiger Woods most expensive, most, best card I just bought. It sold for $396,000 a year and a half ago. I just bought it for $140,000 oh, wow. cash. And he wanted three hundred, dollars and I paid one forty four. This card sold 17 months ago for three ninety six. dollars I bought it for $140,000, okay? I just bought a Joe Burrow card. That's a million-dollar card. It's one of one. It's a national treasure one of one. I bought the car for three hundred thousand dollars. Wow! Okay, <clears throat> I bought a, a couple uh, M Mbappe cards. Max uh, Max's last name. What's Max's last name? The driver that won two Formula One championships. Uh, Verstappen. 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 I just bought two of his cards. That guy's a freaking stud of a guy, his right? Cards are young. Going. Young too. And and buy. I just bought the Pat Mah Patrick Mahomes second best card. I think that guy's a stud of a guy. That's a million and two card. I bought it for four hundred thousand dollars, three hundred eighty thousand dollars, right? So people are starting to sell things like that. So cash is still available to people. They're being reckless, not saying, not saving money, thinking that money is going to be coming regularly. They have no clue what happens when unemployment goes up high next year. And then eventually, in the next 6, 9, 12 months, they're going to sit there and say, babe, I think we have to be realistic. That conversation with a realtor is going to be had. Mm -hmm. And a realtor is going to sit him down and say, listen, John, Mary, I have to tell you guys this. If you're not going to hear from me, you're going to hear from the next realtor if you fire me. And here's what the conversation is. And she, he's going to show, he or she's going to show five, six, seven different stories. And it's going to say, real estate's taking a hit. Mm -hmm. And although you think this is a million-dollar home, this is actually a $790,000 home at best. Mm -hmm. I say we go in the market with 870, and if we get offers in the high sevens, let's entertain it. And that realtor has to sit there, just like a doctor telling a patient, if you don't stop losing weight yeah. and stop eating sweets, you're going to have a heart attack and die mm -hmm. in the next 12 to 24 months. Doctors have to have that conversation. Then it's on the patient to say what? Doc, he's full of shit. What are you talking about? Da, 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 da. No problem. Keep eating what you're eating. Two years later, I'll see you again for a heart attack, yeah. and we'll have that meeting. Yeah. Let's, matter of fact, set it up in the calendar because your lifestyle <laughs> is leading to a heart attack. Yeah. People are starting to realize their financial situation is about to have a heart attack. And unfortunately, very few of us like to pay attention to different markers that's training, trending towards a bad event coming up in our personal life, in our finances, in our health, in many different aspects of our lives. Arrogance, we, we, we are so blind. We have so many blind spots. Human nature has that, right? America's going through it. So if I'm, again, I'm not an expert in this space. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm a real estate expert. We can talk to some other people about that. My opinion is if I'm buying something, I'm very patiently waiting until middle of next year to Q3 of next year. Okay. If I'm going to be living in a house for 10 years, fine. Go buy a house today. But if I'm looking at something that I'm buying that I don't know if I'm going to live in it for 10 years, I'm probably waiting till middle of next year. Mm -hmm. Adam. Look, um, I love the fact that when it comes to your money, it's called personal finance. Because if there's anything that, uh, that I'm an advocate of, and I know we're all advocates of, it's personal responsibility and personal decisions. We live in freaking America, for those of us that live in America. What a blessing to be able to live here and not deal with the nonsense that the rest of the world has to deal with. And, you know, one of the things I always say is there a difference between broke and poor. Poor is, man, you're living in a poor-ass country. You have no opportunities. You are poor. Yep. 
You know, poor is a is a horrible mindset, is a horrible situation to be with. Broke is a different thing. Broke is you make fifty grand a year and somehow you can't get by on on fifty grand a year. Broke is I make a hundred grand a year and somehow I'm living paycheck to paycheck. You see these stats of these millennials. Fifty percent of millennials making a hundred grand or more are living paycheck to paycheck. You see these stories. And it's like, on one hand, I'm like, hey, I hear you. I understand. It's tough out there. But on the other hand, I'm like, buddy, you're making 100 grand a year. Figure it though out. Yeah. So everything comes down to wants versus needs, understanding, keeping up with the Joneses, understanding what lifestyle creep is. The more money you make, the more money you want to spend on nicer things. And um, at the end of the day, you have the power to control your own finances. You have the power to go get another job. You have the the power to stay home on a Saturday night versus going to Vegas like we just discussed. So at the end of the day, save that money. It's on you. I think, Pat, well, I didn't want to put it out on blast here, I think, because, Pat, what we were a point we're getting to, me and Adam would like to borrow 500 grand from you <laughs> and 500 grand from you and start an app called Vegas Schmegas. <laughs> and we're going to bring tourism to Miami. Because wow. then that's the story. Are you guys in? I or? like it. I like it. Wait, Vegas Schmegas. Vegas Schmegas. We don't need let it. Let me get your thoughts, Pat. We've discussed these stories that have kind of gone up and down like a yo-yo over the last couple of years with COVID. You know, they're using like the return to normal, yeah. which is like go back out and just spend money. Yeah. And versus we've seen debt come down and then personal savings go back up and house prices but at the end of the day it's it's your own individual decisions what you do with your money and your finances is, is it not it, it is and and you got to for some people right now they're going through really rough times it's for some people are really exp, exp, experiencing the pain you you know like think about going to sleep every night worried about your company's about to announce layoffs and if you're on that list and you have to clean up your resume mm -hmm. okay that's a scary place to be but I will also remind those same people, if it's a scary place today, listen, if we can just be straight up with you, you were very arrogant a year and a half ago bullying your employer for constant raises every 90 days and threaten them to leave if they didn't give you a raise. You know who you are if you're listening to this. You did that. So both ways, if you did that, you're paying a price today because uh, 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 Jedediah asked me a question. She says, does uh, uh, body count matter? Okay. Do you remember when Jedid asked me the question, does body count matter? Yeah. And I said, here's the best way for me to explain body count. Like, do you, if a girl's been with 100 guys or 50 guys or whatever, does that really matter? I said, the same way it matters if you have 20 jobs in the last 10 years on your resume. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you got 20 jobs on your resume the last 10 years, that tells me you don't know how to handle conflict. You eventually quit. You're the problem. It's not the company. It's not the organization you're part of. You're, you have a negative attitude. You probably also get other people to quit. You attract the life out of the place. You blame everybody. There's an issue with you going into 2024. That's got 2023. That's got to change. So if the trends, by the way, if somebody's listening to this, we can all sell others and blame everybody for our problems. We can blame our bosses. We can blame everybody. Or we can sit there and say, no, this is me. Dude, in the last 10 years, you've had 20 jobs. Why is that? we got to fix something there, right? So as much as some of the people that are going through challenging times right now, you got to go back and look at the decision-making being made a year, two years, three years, four years, five years ago. Our current life is a byproduct of five decisions we made in the last five years. Let me just simplify it for you. Your current life today is a byproduct of five decisions you made in the last five to ten years. Who you married, what you bought, job you took, why you quit, how you lost your emotions in a situation that you could have stayed calm. It's really five decisions you made. You take those five decisions out, you're probably in a different financial situation today. Okay, And if your life is incredible today, you take those five good decisions you made the last five years, your life could be shitty today. Mm -hmm. So we have to get better at our decision-making process. The better we get at making decisions, life tends to give you better life, better lifestyle, better friends, better people, better investments, better opportunities. Things get better. So maybe if there's one skill set that we need to improve in 2023 is a system for making better decisions. So with all the craziness taking place, I believe future looks bright. If you believe future looks bright, get your latest future looks bright hat of Valuetainment. It says future looks bright here. Future looks bright here. We got them in white. We got them in black. We got them in red. Our black on black sold out. These are about to sell out. If you haven't ordered one yet, we had a person in Michigan bought one. Then he bought three. Then when those three people were in the office, they had to order 58 of them. 
because people wanted the future looks bright hat, especially during times like this, because ain't nobody saying future looks bright. To order your future looks bright hat, click over here. And to watch the entire podcast, click here. Take care, everybody.